Hello folks. Heard me just talking about good fundamentals on my last video. Uh, good fundamentals, solid fundamentals. There are tons of videos on it. Now I do not have the most uh, perfect of fundamentals. I'm probably maybe 90% on that. Where I lose that other 10% is I have a tendency to twist my wrist. Uh, I don't know why. I've tried braces. I've tried carpal tunnel braces to hold it straight. And then when that happens, then my arm tends to go crazy. My elbow kicks out or in or what, what have you, you know. So I had to quit on that. Uh, <laughs> I had to give that up because, man, I was tanking. I was, I was shooting horrible. And I also find that when you pay too much attention to it in an actual game or match, it gets worse. So this is why we got we have to practice good fundamentals. Not an hour before the match. I'm talking probably like say you play once a week. From the day the next day that you you, you played in a league or whatever, the very next day, work on your start working on your fundamentals up until two days before the match your next league match. That's what I suggest. Uh, because uh, that way it can become more and more second nature and you're not thinking about it. Uh, good fundamentals is stance and stroke. Okay. But there's also one other thing. It's your eyes. Are your eyes still? Are you getting good... Uh, I transfer from the cue ball to the object ball, or vice versa, however you play. Okay, however you end up uh, shooting. Some people look at the cue ball last. I heard uh, Mr. Jer Jeremy Jones uh, say that he looks at the cue ball last. Others look at the object ball. There's no right or wrong way, but you still there's, you still have to get that good eye transfer from the cue ball to the object ball. And I, I just recently helped, took on another student, that I, I don't charge anybody. But I take some uh, really lower skill level players, and just with the fundamentals, within a couple weeks, they probably raise their average 7, 0.75 to 100 points. And that's what it can do for you. Now, in my case, with twisting my wrist, I take a shorter backswing. Especially on, a, I know this is a short table, I get it. But on a longer shot, I only pull back maybe two inches. That's it. Especially if I know I need to hit this ball dead straight. I get on my park, I get on the shot line. I come straight down in. Move into my English. Make sure my eyes are focused on the aim point. Now I'll start my backswing to the cue ball. Cue ball to the object ball. Cue ball, pause to the object ball. Get that good transfer. Come back two inches. Get make sure I got my good eye transfer, and then hit it. Now you notice that was a little off because I don't take that long. <laughs> Whenever I hang over a ball, something happens. I don't know what it is, but something happens. I go off. I'll demonstrate again. Now, that pause in your backswing, that everybody says, oh, it throws me off. I'd say 60% of people that shoot pool say that, that throws me off. It's not there to throw you off. It's there to help you. It's there to help you get that transition from the cue ball to the, the laser-like focus on your aim point.
I hit that ball dead straight because I wasn't hanging over the shot. I knew what I had to do. I executed. But the biggest thing there was in my pause on my backswing, I transferred my eyes from the cue ball to the object ball at the aim point that I wanted to hit and didn't take my eye off of it. You can break down stance into probably umpteen million things. You can break down stroke in the same way. But that pause, it can drive a stake through your opponent's heart. When you need to hit a dead straight shot and stop that ball within two to three inches of it. down over the shot longer than you know you'll be comfortable doing stand up do it again there's nothing wrong with that just don't take forever because I know I don't like it when people get up there they have two balls left on the table and they're looking at it for five minutes not too much not too many decisions not too many options Really, because the position of the other ball dictates what you should do. Let's say this. The five ball and the eight ball. Your opponent's shooting the five ball. What is he looking at for five minutes? <laughs> what are they doing? I mean, you have to grin and bear it. But you got to draw this ball back or play it off the bottom rail. That's it. One of two things. If you stop it and try to bank it, you'll probably miss it. But for me, I do this. I don't care where this lands. I don't need to be straight perfect. But if I want to, I can be. But if I want to, I know if I go with my stroke four to six inches smooth at a decent speed, I'll end up between the side pockets there. I overran it by a diamond, but I'm still straight on the eight ball. But, well, I guess my point is don't overthink. And that's a, another, thing, another thing a lot of people overlook when it comes to fundamentals. Thinking too much. You know what to do. Do it. The only thing I'm thinking about when I'm playing a shot like this is my position. Once I decided, do I want to draw it back or push it forward? I don't want to draw it back because you can overdraw and end up with a huge, huge angle here that you don't want to scratch there. Now, some people say, I'm going to put some spin on it or something and hit it at the same speed. Guess what? If you can scratch there, you can scratch in another pocket. That's just the way the game works. That's just how it works, guys. So, don't overthink it. Make a decision. Now I'm a, I decide to follow this ball. I have to remember with my stroke and the speed that I choose, you know, to shoot with just about every time, 90% of the time, how much follow through do I need to gain my position back here between the side pockets? That's all I'm thinking about. I find my end point. I'm good. I get down in the shot. Now I think how far through do I need to go and I'm probably going to need some inside with this I'm going to go half tip inside 
at my aim point, pull back, follow through, and I'm right between the side pockets. Overthinking is bad fundamentals. Okay, that's part of the, the thing that you don't want to do. Now, when, there's when there are many options available, okay, take your time. Look at each one. Okay? Don't take forever, guys. We, I, I play against a few guys, a few gentlemen like that, and it just... It, it, it makes it not fun. It, it's... I don't say it ruins a game, but it just makes it not, not so much fun. You know, most people got to get have to get up for work in the morning when you're playing league. I'm one of those guys. I don't like it when somebody does that to me. Such is life. So, again, with your good fundamentals, you can improve on your shortcomings. Okay, you can overcome a lot of them. Um, I wish I didn't twist my wrist. <laughs> I wish. I wish somebody had shown me this stuff years ago when I first started playing. I just wanted to hit the ball hard and make the ball spin. Just like most people do when they first start playing pool. Well, until many years later that I saw no more improvement in my game that I'm like, I, I have to do something. So I have to work on my fundamentals. And uh, another good fundamental is breathing, calming yourself. Watch Mr. Neil Spine, the Terminator. He has one on that. Uh, it works. When I'm when I'm, in a, when I'm in a game and I miss and I'm upset, I go sit in my chair and I breathe. Really helps. It can really calm you down. And it'll loosen your muscles. It'll get released the tension in your muscles in your body. I mean, it really works. It sounds corny, but I'm going to tell you what, it works. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to do some more on uh, good fundamentals. Uh, I don't want to go through all of them. Uh, there's just so much to cover and there are so many videos out there already but this is how I over overcome my bad habits that's the one bad habit that I have right there and I know I drop my shoulder when I shoot guess what it's not always a bad thing you just have to learn how to control that uh, and or factor it in uh, Shane holds his elbow in until he shoots and then he kicks it out dead straight I mean that's not textbook <laughs> so it can be done you know uh, as long as you know what your shortcomings are and then you address them accordingly but if you're twisting your wrist I really suggest short, shorter backswing that really helps me Okay, guys, uh, I'll probably be making some more videos in the next day or two. Don't quote me on that. I said probably. Like I said before, life happens. But I, uh, I, I really believe that if you just, on a longer shot, I'm going to give you, you know, just show you up close. You can have as long a bridge as you want. If you don't believe me, watch Mr. Alex Pagulian. Especially on a long shot, he does this. He's got all this cue out there. He's way back. Does his practice stroke, comes back two inches, and he hits. Even on a long, mostly on the long shots, unless he's trying to draw, he'll come back six to eight. That's about it. But he's got all this cue hanging out in front of him like this on his bridge, comes back that far and hits. I don't know why, maybe that's just how he likes to do it, but that's helped me with twisting my wrist.
nice straight cue ball stop. Not perfect, but very close. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I've bored you long enough. And uh, I thank you again for Team Accelerate. Uh, Matt couldn't be happier with the reviews he's getting and some of the feedback. Uh, oh, and one of my new students, I was beginning to tell you, she's really never won a game, ever. She called me tonight. She's happy as can be. She played three games and she won one of them. So that's a 33% improvement in two weeks. 33%. Just by me straightening out her stance and trying to control her stroke more. And that's all we did. And that was two weeks ago. Can't believe how excited she is. All right. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you soon.